All righty then. Hello, folks. Welcome back. This is part two of the ultimate workbench build, compact workbench build. I get it right at some point. Where the hell were we when we left off? Oh, yeah. We we're just about finishing the um, vice number 1.0. So we've done the hard bit. We've made the grooves with the uh, plow plane. This is a little skip segment, uh, just doing the rest of the uh, framing for the bottom, as you can see. I can sometimes be a little bit eclectic with uh, exactly my ordering of doing things. But I go back to making a spacer to go between the inner rails for the shaft clamps. Um, I was going to make these out of 4B2, but I kind of ran out about two inches short. So I glued two pieces of 3B2 together. Um, this is more to make it look a little bit more neat than anything else. Uh, it doesn't really add any structural value at all. As you can see, I'm using my favorite um, gluing with the finger method. Oh, that's how I got freaking glue on my carpet. I hope my girlfriend doesn't uh, watch this because otherwise I'm gonna get in trouble and probably get knifed in the middle of the night or something. While that dries, I make this uh, last piece of the frame here. This will stop the toolbox from sliding out the other side when you push it in. It will also add some rigidity to the uh, frame itself because there's none on the other side. There's none opposing that obviously because that's where the toolbox comes in. This is me using my um, old aluminium sash clamps. I actually think these are better than the, what the sort of cast iron ones that I've got for the vice. Even though they are really heavy duty, they're kind of really quite tricky to use. They're almost like um, sash clamps that you might use in metal work. Anyway, I can't complain too much. I'm sure I'll find a use for them, even though I don't use them in the, the vice itself. But um, moving on, this is where I try and fix this boo-boo I made earlier. It's pretty simple. I take an off cut of 3B2 from one of the lap joints and I cut it to fit to the size of the gap. Um, I trim it to size pretty slowly and carefully so that it fits and doesn't interrupt that nice 90 degree angle on the leg part. And this is where I then take that piece and uh, snap it in two. Who would have guessed I'm a metal worker and I'm not accustomed to being gentle with things. Anyway, I think at this point I just get pissed off and stick it in there anyway. It's not pretty, but it works and that's fine with me. A bit of wood glue and we are away. Uh, that is wood glue on my fingers, I swear. Anyway, we are back to the space block I was making earlier. I joined it onto the inner rails with 100 millimeter screws, which on reflection were massive overkill on pretty much everything uh, other than joining the tabletop to the actual frame itself. Now you do see me every once in a while use this shitty little um, screwdriver uh, as just down to the fact that I'm lazy and there's a hell of a lot of screws going into this workbench. And to be fair, the screwdriver was that shit. Uh, it didn't help me much anyway. And there we go. Um, just double check that it actually fits and I've not made it completely the wrong size. And we're ready to make the base. I made this from a scrap piece of 18 millimeter hardwood plywood, which I believe I got from chopping up an old project. I always seem to have lots of scraps of this and that all over the place, which is handy in many ways, but it does drive the girlfriend insane. I am a self-confessed hoarder and she is like my control mechanism to stop me living in a complete tip. Anyway, back on topic. I screw the base on with 50 millimeter screws and quite a few of them just to add a good amount of rigidity. After sanding it all down and making it all look nice and tidy, it's time to start joining the worktop onto the frame. Now, if you remember our last video, I said there was quite a big twist in the top itself. So at this point I have to attack it with my number four plane. It can be tricky working out exactly where to take the material off, but as long as you kind of double check every couple of minutes, you can't go too far wrong. Uh, if you have a nice sharp blade, there is nothing more satisfying than using a plane. As you can see, it makes a mess, but it is a satisfying mess. I work on the underside first so that it's ready to attach to the frame and then I'll do the top afterwards. 
Now, as I said, there's a hell of a lot of screwing and unscrewing. If I was slightly more clever about it, I would have worked out a um, order to do things in, and I wouldn't have to keep unscrewing and rescrewing and unscrewing and rescrewing things. But that never happened. Now, as I said before, I was using 100 millimeter screws to attach the top. Uh, so I have to sink them into the 4B2 part of the frame. To do this I used a 15mm Forstner bit in my large hand drill. I believe it's called a swing brace drill. This didn't work out very well. I think the Forstner bit was probably designed for a more high speed electric drill. Uh, but we got there in the end, eventually. As you can see I've pretty much given up on using that shitty screwdriver. So now that that is pretty much sorted, um, I add the inner brace for the sash clamp vise. I think at this point as I started uh, to doubt that the vise I had in mind first time round was uh, the right one for the job, but I am stubborn and I tend to need to be convinced 110% before giving up on something. In the end I did get it to fit and work and everything, um, but the major design flaw that finally made me change my mind I only kind of realised at the end, so I'll explain that a bit later. Uh, next up is the vice drawer itself. Uh, my idea was that when closed the drawer kind of acted like an extension to the bench. I thought that was a clever idea. Um, so I used some of the 6x2 I had left over, uh, joining it with a length of 3x2. I uh, glue it and screw it with the 100mm screws again, and this is uh, a good example of about the maximum I could get out of that drill. After that it pretty much just died. Um, here you can see it doesn't quite fit because uh, my measurements weren't exactly uh, perfect and I needed to cut out a uh, little segment so that it could fit over the rail itself, over the T-junction. And uh, uh, the gods of, of woodworking hated me at this point, as you can see I had to cut straight through that knot. And it's right in the wrong place. But after a bit of perseverance I got there in the end. Uh, I also needed to cut in another two slots for the tops of the sash cl clamp jaws to sit in. Uh, but in the end, uh, it's all sat nice and flush, so I was pretty chuffed. So that's it for part two. Uh, join me in final part three, and we will finish the rest of the bench. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and don't forget to leave me a like or a dislike. Also, check out my Instagram to see what I'm up to right now. I'm always tinkering with something. Well, that sounds rude. My name is Luke, and I'll see you in the next video.